Hi, and welcome to this Sutton Brain Hub mini-series on autoimmune disorders of the nervous system. Today I'm going to be talking about multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune condition affecting the central nervous system, which consists of the brain and the spinal cord. It is one of a group of conditions we call demyelinating disorders, which simply means that as the disease progresses, it removes the conductive sheath known as myelin from nerves. Although we don't know the exact cause of multiple sclerosis, we have a pretty good idea of what is happening. A combination of environmental factors and genetic predisposition starts a degenerative process in the central nervous system. The key step is the reduced function of the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier is a bit like a net, letting in the things the brain needs from the blood, but protecting it from the components that would not be suitable for it. One such component is the T-cell, which is a type of immune cell. In MS, T-cells become sensitive to and activated by myelin. For some reason, there is an increased expression of adhesion molecules on these T-cells, which work like suction cups, allowing the T-cells to suction on and pull themselves past the barrier. The T-cells then release special signalling molecules called cytokines, which dilate blood vessels and create bigger holes in the net, allowing other immune cells like macrophages, B-cells and more T-cells passed. These cells destroy the myelin. B-cells use antibodies to mark the myelin sheath as non-self, which means it should be destroyed, and phagocytic cells, like macrophages, engulf the cells that produce the sheath, which are called oligodendrocytes. The problem with this is that the myelin sheath is quite important. It allows our nerves to communicate with each other at high speed, a process we call saltatory conduction. The myelin sheath acts as an insulator, forcing the electrical impulse to jump down the nerve. If we remove that sheath, the electrical impulse leaks through the axonal membrane and dissipates, which means it can't go to where it needs to. The result? Dysfunction of the central nervous system, causing a huge variety of symptoms. There are four different types of multiple sclerosis. Relapsing and remitting means that patients feel better for a while and then deteriorate. The relapse happens acutely when the T-cell driven attacks occur and remission happens when the body's normal mechanism for dampening down the immune response occurs. This process continues with months or years in between episodes but with each subsequent attack, the recovery is less complete. Primary progressive is a situation where there isn't so much remyelination. Instead, the attack is constant, causing a less stepwise degeneration. Secondary progressive starts in the same way as relapsing and remitting, but turns into primary progressive as time passes. Finally, Progressive relapsing multiple sclerosis is a constant attack, like primary progressive, but with bouts of more severe attacks in between. This form of multiple sclerosis has a faster time course. The inflammation and damage to the myelin sheath leaves patients with multiple plaques or scars in their nerves. We're able to identify these with MRI scans making this the definitive investigation, with an accuracy of about 85%. There are other options for investigating MS. Examining the cerebrospinal fluid, using a technique called a lumbar puncture, we can see the immunoglobulins those B cells from earlier were making. We call the pattern that we see in the CSF, oligoclonal bands. Once we are confident in our diagnosis, the next step is to manage the patient's care. Straightforward advice about what MS is and how deterioration is likely to progress is important. Short courses of corticosteroids can reduce the severity of acute relapses, but it doesn't change the overall course of the disease. Beta interferon injections have been shown to reduce the rates of relapse in some patients, but not all.
and they're very expensive. Immunosuppressants have been used, but again, clinical trials show little evidence of their success. Glatiramere acetate has been shown to reduce the frequency of relapses. Conservative management with physiotherapy can be really therapeutic in some patients, and symptomatic relief is very important. Subscribe to Soton Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.